Happy New Year. It's January, it's 2019, and I am so excited to be back doing this new video. I'm Richard Chivers, this is Sharpen Your Spades. I'd love for you to subscribe and follow the rest of my journey this year. I've got a lot of things to get on with. It doesn't feel like you can do much at this time of the year in terms of gardening, but you really can. You can't so much, but you can really prepare for spring, which is what I'm gonna try and do today. I'm gonna to do some work on the polytunnel area, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, we're gonna look at what's growing, because there is green, there is green shoots, and I'm gonna finish up a raised bed to have more space for growing as we get into the spring. I'm also gonna try and do some tackling of the overgrown area, just to cut it back a little bit and see where I've got. I'm gonna make a start anyway. Come with me. It is January, it is dark, it is cold, but look, full of beans. That's great. It's wonderful to see some life on the allotment at this time of the year. These are the ball beans that we planted back in November. Isn't that a thrill? Hello. <laughs> Sometimes it's really easy to come down to your allotment and say, I'm going to do a bit of this, I'm going to do a bit of that. And when I took on my allotment the first time, I was doing that. I was potching around here and in the end, nothing really got finished. And then the spring came and the summer and the weeds grew and everything just became more overwhelming. If you set a couple of tasks for each visit to the allotment and just do them in the order you say because at the end of it you'll walk away from that day at the allotment you feel like you've achieved something this is what i'm going to do today i'm going to try and do them in the order if they take longer than it doesn't really matter because i'm still going to come away and feel like i've achieved something rather than just wandering around aimlessly doing a bit of this doing a bit of that it really works for me give it a try So the first thing I want to do today is actually finish a bed uh, that I started at the end of last year. So I've got more space in time for spring to get planted. Started building this bed uh, last year and I didn't get around to finishing it. And I want to finish that now. I've had some people ask me about wooden frames for my beds and is it expensive? It, it probably can be if you buy it. And I've got to admit, when I first started building the raised beds, I did use timber that I bought, it's not cheap. So luckily we've got a, a company locally that gives us all their free pallets. They're such a good resource of reclaimed wood. They're usually in excellent condition. Um, and if they're for domestic use, they, they're usually just heat treated. So they, there's no chemicals or anything on them. And I'd advise you to get in touch with a local company near you and see if they're willing to get rid of their pallets because all my other raised beds have been built from reclaimed pallet wood. It's, it, it's brilliant. I remember when I was building the raised bed from bought timber, you're looking at about 15 to 20 pounds per bed and this is a 10 foot by 4 foot bed and so it's expensive to do it that way so a lot of time the company just wants to give it to you anyway you're doing them a favour there's a number of ways of putting them together I just made up my own method which is I build the frame um, and I just sit it on the ground I've never had any problem with it they don't seem to move and I build up the wood chip paths around it so what I'm going to do today is obviously because I'm no dig I'm not going to be turning the soil over um, I am going to remove some of the bigger clumps of couch grass and any perennial weeds I can see. Just remove them with a fork and then I'm going to layer some cardboard down and I'm going to top it up with, with compost and build the bed back up. It's a lot of compost to start off with, but year on year you're only adding a couple of inches, which to me is the equivalent that you would be digging into the ground anyway. There's always time to have a cup of something hot on the allotment, right? Okay. Just being on this place and relaxing. Especially in urban areas, I notice as someone who lives in a city, that's why allotments seem so valuable to me. Having this environment where you can have a garden, which doesn't cost a lot of money a year, grow fruit, grow vegetables, grow flowers, because I think gardens are pretty much at a premium when you live in the city. For me, allotments give you that opportunity. Shall we crack on? Right, so what I've done is I've cleared up the bigger perennial weeds that I found, some of the couch grass, any bind weeds that I've managed to pull out. Then I've put a layer of cardboard down. And I've tried to push it right to the edge of the bed, trying to push it under the frame. What I'll do is that'll be a reasonably long barrier um, against any weed growth that come back through underneath. And on top of this, I'll spread the compost. And what you'll get is a clean bed to start off with. And eventually the cardboard will rot down and the weeds under underneath now will just die away and you'll have a fresh bed to continue with. Magic. Ah, 
I'm excited by this. I'll tell you why. This is a blackberry. Um, it's not just any blackberry, it's a cultivated blackberry called Reuben. It's the first primo cane in the UK. I didn't know what that meant until I looked it up, but it sounds good. It does sound good. Um, a primo cane, essentially, it means that it will fruit in its first year. And what I liked about this plant is it's quite compact. It's not going to ramble all over the place like a drunk. It's going to climb up this frame and I'm going to get fruit on it. And they're really easy to maintain because at the end of the autumn when they finish fruiting, you just cut the whole thing back and wait for it to spring up again in spring. See, I told you it was exciting. So this is the space, the poly tunnel occupied last year. If you saw my last video, you would have seen the consequences of the storm that basically destroyed it and me and Kev picking it up and putting it back on my own plot. Well, I've taken it apart now. The plastic is gone. I've collected all the pipes up because I think they might be useful for some other things on the allotment. Uh, maybe some small cloches or covers or brassica netting. Collected up any usable timber that I'd use from the polytunnel because we can reuse that in terms of building beds and stuff. And I've got to think about what I'm going to do next. I've had quite a lot of ideas about building the next potty tunnel. I'm going to invest a little bit more and build a proper one. And I'm going to build a timber frame. It's going to be pretty heavy and secure. And I'm going to buy some really good quality potty tunnel cover, which should last a good five or six years. Um, and I've decided it's best to invest in it now because in the long run, it's going to just do me some favors. The last one was an experiment. It probably could work for a number of people if you anchor the potty tunnel properly. Um, for me, it just didn't work. One other thing I want to try and do today is get started on this lot behind me. Just want to clear it back a little bit so I can see what I've got there because it's the new part of the plot. Luckily, Kev's here. He's going to give me a hand. Come on, Kev. How's your foot? I'm so glad to be back on the allotment in 2019. December felt quite a long month and it's nice to be gardening. And although you can't really sow anything at this time of month, it's a great opportunity to get out on the allotment and do some tasks to be ready for spring. So I am thrilled. Plus it's great fresh air. If you like what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. And also I'd love to know what you're doing in your allotments now. So drop me a comment below and I'll get back to you.